Well, it's time to start a new project. This is a 1961 wheel horse model 401. It has a four horsepower Kohler engine and three speed transmission. The exhaust guard's missing. That's all I've noticed so far. You might think the cast iron footrests are missing, but they're not. I'll talk about that later on in the video. This tractor was used enough to get the mower deck rusted out. Don't know if the engine's original. You can see the top cover was replaced with a blue one there. I'm sure the carburetor's not original because of the choke linkage. I'll show that at some point. Most everything else appears to be in good original condition. I plan to clean it up, keep the original paint, and get it running and driving. Here's some sales literature from 1961. It shows the three tractors available at that time. A four horsepower model 401, a five and a half horsepower model 551, and the 7 horsepower model 701. I've heard people talk about an early production 401 that has no center rib behind the fuel tank cap and has part of a 1960 dash plate screwed to the hood support for a serial number plate. So here you can see on this one there's no rib behind the fuel tank cap. And there's a metal tag screwed to the hood support. Here's a dash plate from a 1960 tractor. You can see where it says serial number at the top. The radius corners at the top are the same size. The square corners at the bottom indicate it was cut off. And you can see the top of the C and the tip of the arrow left over from where it was cut. I don't know if I'll be able to recover a serial number. I cleaned up this 1960 plate and I don't see any number on it. If you look at the sales literature again, the 401 in the picture has no rib behind the fuel tank cap but the 551 in the picture next to it does have a rib. If you look down here you can see the metal tag screwed to the hood support. The 551 frame is different because the battery's there. This appears to be early 1961 literature because it shows the early features of the 401 model. Here's a picture of a 551 I have. I believe this is an original decal in its original place. That part of the frame's covered by the tire in this picture. So this literature don't show what type of tag was used on the early 551. I think the later model 401 used a decal instead of the metal plate. Similar to the 551 decal I showed earlier. I couldn't find a picture of the left side of a 401 in my old documents, but down here it shows the two engines available. The 4 horsepower engine has a Fairbanks Morse recoil with the aluminum housing. 
So that's what I need to get for this one. Just for your reference, here's the 1961 literature I'm looking at. It's a fold-out type thing. You might have noticed that this tractor don't have any foot rests. The picture on the fold-out document show the 551 has them. But if you look at the 401 picture, it's hard to tell. On the cover of the operator manual, where the three models of tractors are shown, the 401 is shown without foot rests. I checked this tractor and there's no set screw marks on the shaft where they would be if it ever had them. So it's not supposed to have any. Enough of that. I'm going to get this mower deck off. This is counterbalanced with a spring. It's under the frame, hooked on the mounting bolt. Here's what that looks like. The spring's hooked on the mounting bolt, so when I take the long bolt out, the spring will come out with it. I'm going to put the mower deck on blocks to take off the spring pressure. I'm going to knock this long bolt out with the hammer handle. Feels like it's hitting something. Yeah, it's hitting on that clutch linkage. I'll have to move that. Okay, there I'm done. Well, not really. That changes the look of it, don't it? I can't get the hood off until I get the steering shaft out. 
Under the hood and behind the fuel tank is a set collar that keeps the steering shaft in. I'm going to scrape off the grease and pick the gunk out of the set screw hole so I can loosen it up. That set collar has to slide down this shaft and it's a pretty tight fit. All you can do is clean and sand the shaft slowly until it can slide down. When it gets tight, I hold on to the collar with pliers and turn the steering wheel back and forth. I'm spraying WD-40 on there. It'll help clean it and get a little lube on it. Down at the frame, there's another set collar. I don't need to bring this collar up the shaft, but in the end it all has to be cleaned and freed up to slide off the lower end of the shaft. Since I have that upper collar slid down the shaft some, I can lift the shaft and expose this gear. It's held on with a roll pin. I'm going to clean some of the grease out of there. Now I need to drive out that roll pin. I'm going to pick the end that's sunk in the deepest and I'm going to use a straight punch that just fits into that size hole. I'm going to lower the shaft so the punch is as close to the frame as possible. If you're going to hammer against the frame that's the most stable position. I need to turn the wheels to the left, so I'm going to lift the steering shaft until the gear is not engaged. That moves this tire forward some, so I can get the hammer in there. I have to engage the gear again to get the pin close to the frame for support. Pull out your punch once in a while just to make sure it's not getting stuck in there. Now 
Now this gear should come off. And this set collar comes off. Now I gotta go back to cleaning the shaft so that other set collar can come off. Well, after all that, this should slide right out. That's a nice looking steering wheel there. I want to take the hood off next, so I need to disconnect the cables. I'll start with the throttle cable. Next is the choke cable. It looks like the previous owner put a new switch in, and there's a connector so you can unplug it. That's handy. But I might have to change that blue wire into a black one. Since the fuel line goes through the hood support, I'm going to disconnect it at the fuel bowl here so I can get the hood off. These screws have pretty big slots. I'm going to use this two-handed screwdriver. I don't have to hold the nut on the back because it's welded to the hood support. That one wasn't very tight. There wasn't a bolt at the front of the hood. I wonder if it got broken off in there. Nope, that's just dirt, so that's good. <laughs> this fuel line is hard. I'll have to replace that. I'm going to have to cut it to get it off. I try not to cut all the way through the rubber so I don't scratch the barb fitting. Sometimes it don't work that way. I want to pull the engine next so this exhaust pipe has to be unclamped. There's some rusty threads there, so I'll clean it with the wire brush first. This belt guard is next. That wasn't very tight. It's because the spacer's missing. I'll have to make one. The 
This one has the spacer on it. Well, there's a problem. This is a coarse thread bolt. When Kohler made this hole, they used a fine thread. And when Wheel Horse made the rear hole, they used a regular thread. So you need two different type bolts for your belt guard on these. I'll use a fine thread bolt when it goes back together. There's another problem. You can see the top of the belt's worn because this arm's too close. That should be adjusted so it clears the belt when the belt's tight. Now I'm going to go for the engine bolts. Well, I think that's a good place to stop for now. Next time, I'll keep taking stuff apart. Alright, that's it.